Hey Hair Lounge community, Angelina here at the Hair Lounge. Today we're gonna to talk about how to flat iron your hair. That way it looks like you just left the salon. Stay tuned and we'll get right into it. If you enjoy learning about hair, click the subscribe button and the bell to get notified for all my new videos. So first we're gonna talk about what you need to do to prep your hair. So if you get out of the shower and your hair is wet, you need to make sure you're completely drying your hair. So if you've ever dried your hair and then you run your hands through it and it still feels kind of cold to the touch, that means it's not completely dry. So you need to make sure every spot from root to ends is completely dry. Another thing is, is before you actually run the flat iron over your hair, you need to use a thermal protecting spray, which if you haven't watched one of my previous videos about thermal protecting spray, click this link and it'll take you to that video. And you're gonna wanna make sure you're spraying every single section. That's gonna protect your hair from that super, super high heat of your flat iron. That is a step that a lot of people leave out and it does leave your hair susceptible to damage. A lot of times it's mostly around that front hairline section where those hairs are super, super fine. So you wanna make sure you spray those hairs with the heat protectant. Another thing is, is you don't necessarily have to do this with freshly washed hair and dried hair. It can be air dried. Today, I washed my hair yesterday morning and I didn't do anything to it. I just kinda threw it back and so, it is completely dry. I'm gonna take my Joyco Ironclad Thermal Protecting Spray and spray each section. You wanna make sure that you are spraying root to end. And when you're doing your sectioning, you wanna make sure that those sections are small. That's one thing that people do and why their hair is not completely flat or straight when they're straightening their hair is their sections are way too big. So make sure that your section is roughly about an inch wide and then when you're actually taking the sections, you don't want them to be bigger than your actual flat iron. I'm also going to take my wet brush and make sure I completely get all the tangles out of my hair before I take the flat iron on it. Another mistake people do when flat ironing their hair is if they have a dial on their flat iron, it's either too low or too high. Roughly, depending on your hair type, but average, you need to have your flat iron set at 365 degrees. That is gonna give you enough heat without damaging your hair too much. A lot of times those flat irons go up to 400, 425, 450, and that is very very, very hot for your hair and you do not need it that high. Obviously, the finer your hair, you need to stick within those 300, maybe 325 range. And then average, like I said, is 365. And then if you have very, very thick, curly and coarse hair, that's when you're gonna pump those heats up to closer to 390, 400. I am using my GHD flat iron, and this is an automatic, you just turn it on and off. It has the technology when you run it through your hair, it adjusts based off your hair. What I like to do is take a comb and put my comb in my actual section and comb through it while I'm actually running that flat iron through my hair. This gets the tangles out while I'm actually flat ironing my hair. If you um, have ever gone over your hair when it has been tangled, you notice that those ends don't look smooth. So you wanna make sure that you're combing all those tangles out or using the comb while you're taking that flat iron through. As you can see, my sections are fairly thin. You can't completely see through them, but they're not much wider than my actual flat iron. Another mistake people do when they're actually flat ironing their hair is they're doing way too many passes. So whenever you go over the top of your hair, make sure you're going at a fairly slow pace. That way it is having time to actually put that heat on each little section that you're going over the top of it. You don't wanna go through it too fast and obviously not too slow or else it will damage your hair. Another mistake is people don't section their hair. It's very important to section your hair because you're going to make sure that you're getting all of your spots on your head. So again, I combed out all those tangles and taking 
my small-ish sections. When I'm flat ironing my hair, I don't really care if my bottom is super flat. I have fairly straight hair. I don't have a lot of wave to it. So if my bottom is not completely flat, I'm okay with it because then I get a little body to my hair. So again, just taking my flat iron, going fairly slow through it and flat ironing it. Like I said, I don't pay too much attention to how straight I get it on these underneath sections. I take smaller sections up on my top sections of my hair. Once you get kind of closer to these front sections, you wanna make sure if your hair is on the finer side, turn that flat iron down a little bit. These hairs all around your hair hairline are finer than the rest of the hair on your head and they can get damaged super, super easily. So if you do have that dial on that flat iron, make sure you turn those down. So as you can see, when I'm holding out these sections, I am not really turning my flat iron until I get to the very ends. And the reason is, is I want it to be fairly straight, but I don't like when my ends are completely stick straight. I like when they kind of naturally curve at the ends. You necessarily do not have to do that to your hair if you want your ends to be stick straight. Another thing is, is whenever you're getting closer to your scalp, you are able to get a little bit more lift on your hair, depending on if you like that lift towards your scalp. Not everybody likes lift towards their scalp, so it just kind of depends on how you like your hair actually flat ironed. And as you see, I'm not going super, super fast. That's one mistake people make when they're flat ironing their hair. They try to do it super fast, and so you're not gonna get it as straight. But sectioning is key. Same thing on this next section. I'm gonna go through it fairly fast and then we'll come back to my top few sections to kind of show you how I still get a little bit of lift. Okay, so now we're getting to the last few sections. And what I like to do to give myself a tiny bit more volume is I do smaller sections. So as you can see, this one's a little bit thinner. You can kind of see through it. And I lift that hair up completely off my head so I can get that flat iron in fairly close and really kind of curve my flat iron. So as you see before, I wasn't curving it at all, but towards my roots, I'm gonna start half turning it and sliding it down my hair just to give myself a little bit of volume up at those roots. I'm gonna go back to my normal flat ironing of the rest of it. So as you can see, I kind of have a little bit of line in there from the flat iron, and that's just because I was not moving it fast enough in there. So I will go back through and smooth that out. So still getting that volume up towards the top, but straighter towards my ends. And I do that all the way through on this top section again, taking smaller sections, but getting a tiny bit more lift up at my root. And if you do have to go over those ends, I do try to run my hands through it and not go over the top of it when it still is feeling pretty hot to the touch. That just ensures you're not completely damaging your hair, putting heat over the top of it to where it's way too hot. So again, running that over the roots and smoothing out those ends. And 
as you can see, I'm holding kind of closer to the back of my head. I'm holding on to my actual hair, pulling it tight while I'm pulling the flat iron through my hair. And what that does is make sure that you are getting um, kind of resistance on your hair so it's going to actually smooth it. If you're just, you know, your curling iron or, or sorry, your flat iron isn't tight or um, strong holding on the actual hair section, it's not going to get very straight. So you want to make sure you're able to really clamp down on that hair and by holding it, it gives it a little bit of resistance. That way it's going to actually smooth that section. Okay, so now this is kind of the very last section. As you can see, I already have a decent amount of lift and volume and it's still fairly straight. So I don't really feel like I need to flat iron my top section. It's just more kind of these wavy ends. And this is just gonna ensure that I still have lift and kind of the natural body that my hair naturally has towards my roots. And it's just more to smooth out these ends. So again, I'm running the flat iron through and pulling on this hair to make sure I can get it straight. Now going over my bangs, I am gonna kinda smooth those out just a little bit. I really think the key when you're actually flat ironing your hair is making sure you're getting enough tension on it to get those ends smooth. Obviously, I don't have super, super curly hair, so for someone who has, you know, kind of that coarser, curlier hair, this is gonna be key for you, just because you wanna make sure you're able to smooth out those curls if you're trying to get it very straight. So now that I am all completely straight, a lot of times what I like to do is I like to spray some texture spray into it. And this is gonna help give me a little bit more body even though it is straight. So I kind of lift up my hair, kind of spray it underneath. And I like using texture spray when my hair is straight versus hairspray because hairspray will kind of weigh down your hair a little bit more depending on which one you're using. And texture spray gives you a little bit of body in it still, but with a tiny bit of hold, okay? And then another thing you can do is use any kind of oil you have. This is the Olaplex bonding oil, their number seven. Just a couple dabs on my hand and then just run it through those ends. Your ends are the oldest hair on your head, obviously, so it has a harder time getting oil from your scalp to your ends, and so you need to add a little extra help to it or a little extra love with some oil to keep it shiny and healthy. Okay, so this is kind of the final look. I hope you guys like it. I hardly wear my hair straight whenever it's starting to get a little bit long, but Hopefully this gives you guys a few tips to use on your own hair. Hope you guys like this video. Don't forget, hit that red subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the like button if you liked this video. I love seeing all your guys' comments, so make sure you keep them coming, and we will see you all next time. See you later.